Welcome back. I'm in the food forest right now, and we have a crazy mess of pumpkins right here. And this is because I figured something out. Something super easy that will make your pumpkins grow like you would not believe. Last year, we planted pumpkins here and there around the food forest, and I, I dug little pits, and I threw a little bit of manure in them, I threw a little bit of compost in them, threw a little bit of ashes, tried to improve these small areas right in the grass, just hacked holes in the grass, put some stuff in there, made a little mound, like you're supposed to do a little mound, planted pumpkin seeds, and they did pretty blah. It was a hard year. We had pounding rain, followed by drought, followed by pounding rain, followed by a long stretch of drought and excessive heat, up 104, 105 degrees every single day for a month, completely ridiculous. And the pumpkins were not happy, except for one oasis of pumpkins that I didn't plant at all. When we first moved into our property, we made a compost pile. We put up some pallets, my daughter and I built some pallets with some zip ties and just made a little compost pile and we were throwing our kitchen scraps and everything in there. And that was before we had pigs and chickens to eat all the kitchen scraps. And we just had this area where we would throw all these bits and pieces and yard waste and everything else. And it was right at the edge of where she put in her gardens. So she put in these beautiful gardens and had nice little rows of things for her seed business. And then the pallets got thrown away and there was just a little compost pile back there and we figured well you know what we'll get around to scraping out that material from the compost pile later and sifting it but it just wasn't a big priority in the growing season and then a few pumpkins showed up in it and then those pumpkins started to run and those pumpkins ran and ran and ran ate my daughter's garden she could not keep them out because they were growing so fast they went over the fence, they went into my plant nursery, they went across the brick plaza at the back of our house and rooted into the ground everywhere and produced 450 pounds of pumpkins. They actually died back in the middle of summer when it was really hot. As Soon as it cooled off a little bit, they made an entire extra round. I'm convinced they would have made a thousand pounds of pumpkins if we hadn't have had the frost that came in in November or so because they were still producing pumpkins and still producing pumpkins and still producing pumpkins a ridiculous amount and we think that the seeds were a seminal pumpkin cross because we had been planting and growing and crossing seminal pumpkins but at some point some seeds had made their way into the compost pile and they grew so what did we learn from this well we learned that the nice mounds that we planted gave us only about a hundred pounds and had all kinds of issues and then the accidental compost pile mound that we planted was insanely productive. So this year, knowing that one mound made us 450 pounds of pumpkins last year, I made about 10 compost piles and planted them with pumpkins. Do the math. I didn't even plant these pumpkins. The pigs did. And that's one of the tricks with pumpkins. They can't know that they were planted. It has to be a secret. We had our pigs out here and we fed them a lot of fall pumpkins from a display of pumpkins that we ended up getting from a garden shop. They were getting rid of them after Halloween and I said, we could take those. Turns out they're really good eating pumpkins. People were probably keeping them mostly as ornamentals, but we ate some of them, but we had a lot of them. So we also gave them to the pigs. They got mixed up with all the fodder and the pig manure and the mulch and all the mess that was back here. And now we have this huge patch of pumpkins, which teaches us something. It's huge already. So let me show you how to just do this on purpose. We scooped this mess out of our compost pile bin. It's about half broken down. There are wood chips in here, there's some biochar in here, some ashes, some lime, some restaurant waste, kitchen waste, all kinds of stuff, slaughter waste. It's just ridiculous, just kind of a big mix of whatever we had, coffee grounds, etc. And it was all thrown in there to rot down about halfway. 
Now, if you don't have time and you have compost, just throw the compost on the ground. But if you have a little more time and you could start a compost pile, say in the fall, and then be ready to plant it in the spring, you could simply just throw kitchen scraps and yard waste on the ground. We've done that too in some of our piles, like the first pile that everything grew out of. So now that you have a pile like this, all you gotta do is throw seeds on it and just let the pumpkins run. Somewhere I have a, a rake. I plan all of my shots perfectly. Every frame is a painting on these videos. So all I'm gonna do is just rake them over and cover them into this mess. Alternately, you can just take a pumpkin in the fall and throw it on top of the compost pile. Take the center out, or take a rotten one, or take the guts out of one you have in the kitchen, and throw it on top of your compost pile and let it rot down. That's how we ended up with our first one, and that's how we ended up with some of the ones that are at the edge of our garden right now. These are kabocha squash that I got from a friend of mine from Borneo. And so she gave me the seeds and saved them and it's a little late in the year to plant, but it gives you a demonstration. This is what we did to get the other ones that are running in the food forest and at the edge of our garden. And I'm gonna show you those now. This pile right here, we didn't really have anything good growing here this last year. Nothing seemed to really like this corner. So we threw some compost on it and just whatever we had, coffee grounds, etc. You can still see some of the coffee grounds here and a lot of sticks and just last year's garden waste. And then we threw broken pumpkin parts over here and they're starting to run. They're not as happy as the ones in the food forest where we had a great big mound of compost, but that's probably because a lot of this stuff is just wood mulch that was not broken down very much. I'll show you some others that are doing much better. These right here, we had the meat birds, which are all in our freezer now, running through this area and they manured it all and they spilled a lot of feed and they made a swampy mucky mess and we threw the pumpkin seeds over here and here you go. There's pumpkins running right from this area and they're, they're looking pretty good. They got a little later start than the other ones, but they're gonna make some pumpkins. Over here are my grocery row gardens where we've put in a lot of improvements. We've put down mulch, we tilled the ground, we added manure and ashes and everything and planted all our perennials. But this area over here didn't have much in it. So we dug these beds for ube yams. So I've got three rows of ube and then I put three about cubic yard piles of rough compost and threw seeds from last year's compost pile pumpkins into them. So these are vigorous, a little bit larger fruited seminal pumpkin crosses of some sort, Cucurbita machata. So we have one mound here and these were put in right around the time of the last frost or a little bit before and they just sort of grew as they wanted to. So that one right there and this one right here and this one right here we're just pile up rough material, throw the seeds on top, kick them into the ground and let them roll. And if it follows last year, we have these here, we have the other ones in the food forest, we have that one at the corner, we have the ones the chickens planted. We really should be on track to get about two tons of pumpkins. Even if we get half the expected yield, we'll still be hitting a ton of pumpkins. And that's very exciting. They like this way better then they like being in a little mound in the dirt. They are just absolute hogs for organic matter. It's like they're designed to be eaten and have the centers thrown onto a pile of refuse and waste and cooking wastes and then just grow again and feed you like something that is semi-domesticated to live at the edge of human habitations. They grow like crazy when you do that. Make a rough compost pile throw some seeds or the remnants of a pumpkin with the seeds in it on top of it, even in the fall or in the spring, in the winter, just let it all rot down together. It's going to grow that way. And this is just the most ridiculous yields. You will just see insane growth. And really quickly, we are already getting pumpkins from the pig pen right now. And that was just from pumpkins we fed to them in the fall that got mixed up with all that manure and rough organic matter. We dumped a bunch of peanut shells, peanut waste and all kinds of stuff in there. And that big messy mix, they're just running out of there, just like they're running out of all the rough compost piles we made and out of last year's compost pile. So this is the way 
to grow pumpkins if you just want ridiculous yields with almost no work. And you could literally just dump material in your lawn and let the pumpkins grow out of it. If they've got that to feed on, they will go right over the lawn and they will conquer the lawn and they'll make you pumpkins. We had them grow into all kinds of stuff that we didn't expect they would actually be able to manage and grow through thick weeds over fences over nursery fabric and they just kept running and running and running and all over daisy's garden they just were fed with a nuclear reactor that just drove incredible growth and they conquered the world if you want to learn more about gardening the easy way check out my book minimalist gardening where i have all kinds of tips and a philosophy of gardening that will just cut through all the junk and get you food with less work and less spending money. Also, please join us at our new school community. We have a awesome social media and teaching site where I have been putting up exclusive videos, including a training class where I've got three videos up already on how to create food for us the easy way. And there's already hours of content up there that is not available on YouTube. So if you like gardening and you love what I do and you wanna support me, go join over there and we will have lots of conversations without trolls, without bots, without ads. I'll put a link to that below. Thanks for joining me. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green.